Hey, it's Marquetta Bresen, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about your wig kit essentials. So let's get into it. Now, this video is for those of you who make wigs and who also ventilate. If you ventilate, this is going to be the baseline suggested wig kit for you. I'm pointing this way because I have the tools listed here on my screen so that I don't miss anything. All right, so let's get into it. Starting with number one is going to be obviously your wig block. Now, when I teach at my live events, I always talk about the importance of having different size wig blocks and purchasing wig blocks from different manufacturers because they're all shaped differently. And guess what? Everybody's head is shaped differently as well. Some people have what we call an egg head, which is a pronounced occipital bone. Um, other people have a flat occipital bone area. And so you wanna make sure that you have an arsenal of different size wig blocks in your kit. But if you're just beginning, having one wig block is going to do you just fine. These are just things that I want you to think about, not anything that I want you to just be like, dang, I don't have this or gosh, I can't start because I don't have this item, all right? Next is going to be your ventilating needle. So the next two kind of go together, your ventilating needle and your needle holder. So the ventilating needles come in multiple sizes and there's different styles, if you will. You have your German needles, which are long and flat with an, an, a hard angle. And then you have your Asian needles, which are short and have more of a hook or a distinct curve. At the end of all of those needles is a teeny, teeny, tiny, tiny, tiny little thing. It's like a little nick and it's called a barb, B-A-R-B. That barb is what's responsible for holding that hair onto that needle so that you can make a knot, so that you can ventilate. That's why a lot of people will go and grab a crochet hook, like for crocheting um, like uh, tiny little yarn things and stuff like that, they'll go and grab that because it looks very similar to a ventilating needle, but it's not a ventilating needle because no matter how small that crochet hook is, it's not going to be able to get through some types of lace. It's still gonna to be too big to get through some types of lace. So you wanna make sure you're actually using a ventilating needle. And there's also another German type needle that's long and doesn't have an angle. It has more of a, more of a curve, but it's not like a hook, it's just kind of curved. So those are the options when it comes to needles. Then you have your different holders. You have your plastic needle holders, you have your brass, needle holders, you have your aluminum needle holders, your wooden ones, and I'm trying to make sure I hit them all, and I think that's it. But now there's something else that is the thing that I like to use, and that is the bamboo holders that have the needle made into the holder. I like those because I don't have to keep up with two separate things. I don't have to keep up with needles and the holder. I can just keep up with the one thing. The size is stamped on them, and it's great. All right, each size of needle is an oct, a different oct, O-C-T. Each oct corresponds with the number of hairs that that needle is designed to pull. So if you have a three oct needle, it's designed to pull either two to three hairs or three to four hairs, depending on the manufacturer. They will tell you the size when you purchase the needles, but you definitely need to have uh, several in your kit. Your smaller needle sizes are gonna be used for anything that you're going to be using film lace for. So if it's the hairline, or if it's in the nape of the neck, or any type of detail work you're doing, that's when you're gonna use your zero one or one two. If it's anything bigger than that, that's typically going to be used on your base lace, or somebody, some people call it opera lace, which is the lace with the bigger holes. Or if you're doing some chunking, you're chunking a wig out, you can use a bigger needle a bigger oct needle um, in that area. And those needles that I like to use with the, uh, the needle made onto them, 
Um, actually, I'll just give you a list of where to purchase everything below this video. That way I can just keep it moving. Okay, next is going to be a chair, a good chair. Listen, your body is very, it's important to take care of your body when you're ventilating because if not, you can develop bad habits, bad posture. If your neck is down like this the whole time and your arms and you try to come up after ventilating for an hour or two straight, it ain't gonna feel good. So you need to make sure that you invest, notice I said invest, in a good chair. Um, this particular chair, this is where I do all of my ventilating work. In fact, if I have my tripod, I just slide my chair back, pop my tripod right here and I work. If not, I put my cradle here and I put my wig block inside my cradle and I work and that's it. But you wanna make sure that you invest in a good chair. My preferred brand is Herman Miller. Herman Miller is expensive. I am not gonna lie to you, but I'll put some options down below in the uh, description box of um, maybe one or two options. But if you can swing it, get you a Herman Miller chair. It's gonna last you for a very long time. It's not gonna break down or fall apart and it's very, very comfortable. Uh, another option is you can always go to a store like Relax the Back and sit in different chairs and see what works for you. But that is a very important purchase that you should not uh, skimp on. Okay, moving right along. Next is your desk. That's important because you want to make sure that your desk is stable enough to work on, especially if you're gonna be using a cradle, you don't want it to be moving around a lot. Some people just use a kitchen table or something like that, and that's fine. But if you have a wig room or an area where you're gonna be making wigs, you need to make sure you invest in a good desk. Honestly, my preferred brand is from Sam's Club and it's called the Seville Collection. I don't think they make stuff specifically for Sam's. I just so happen to f always find it in there. And it's called Seville, S-E-V-I-L-L-E. -E. They have tables, they have storage things, they have some of everything. It's a good height and it fits my chairs perfectly. So I'll link that down below as well. But whatever you do, you wanna make sure that you invest in a good desk that's going to be nice, heavy, and substantial. And another thing that I do as well is I put sandbags on my, my desk, especially, especially because of the way my camera is positioned, because I don't have a tripod. I have like this arm where my camera is positioned. And so I make sure to put sandbags on the, the little railings at my desk so I don't have a lot of movement if I'm hitting my table. All right, so those are just some things to think about. All right, so let's move on to the next item, which is going to be the cradle. Now, a lot of people are like, what is a cradle? A cradle is basically a box that is meant to hold your wig block, and it has divots. Some have Vs, some have um, little circles or half circles that you can lay your wig block on to adjust so that you can work better. Um, it is perfect for a setting like this. My desk is literally here. My cradle will sit here and then my wig block here and it's a perfect height. So it's just an alternative to using a tripod. Um, I designed my own cradle. You can see the bureau footage playing somewhere uh, where you can see how we designed it. It has handles on it and all of that good stuff. Um, there are other companies that you can purchase cradles from that have different designs um, that serve the same purpose. Um, but definitely investing in a cradle is going to be the way to go because you may not always want to work from a tripod, okay? Moving on to the next one, which is your tripod. Now, tripods, not all tripods are created equal. 
I have a favorite tripod that I absolutely love to use from Atelier Bossy and I haven't found one that's better yet. I like this tripod for a number of different reasons. Number, the, I guess the, the biggest thing I like the tripod for is because there is a mechanism on the tripod that will expand the part that holds, like if this is the hole right here that holds the, um, that the tripod sits onto, Sometimes if the tripod hole is like this small and this is this big, it's gonna move and shift. Well, there's a mechanism in this particular tripod where there's a little thing that you turn that has this thing that expands out to fit any size hole for any type of wig block or uh, wig head that you're putting on this tripod. It is absolutely amazing and it can break down and fit into my carry-on luggage. I love this thing. So that is, I mean, that's really one of the only ones that I would recommend investing in because of the functionality. The feet allow you to take the pressure off of your back when you're ventilating. You can prop your feet on the feet. There's a straight neck and there's a goose neck. They're both amazing. They are expensive, but it is worth the investment. Moving on to the next thing is going to be lighting. Lighting is everything. I've been teaching wig making for a very long time, well over 12 years, over well over 12 years. One of the number one keys to being able to ventilate is being able to see, and that's having proper lights. If you don't have proper lights, it's gonna be very difficult for you to see the holes in the lace, all right? You can use a ring light, you can use one of the portable lights. It doesn't matter, I don't care what you use, just make sure that my suggestion is that you make sure that it is LED and you make sure that it illuminates the lace enough for you to be able to see. All right, so I'm gonna link some options down below and I'll share this quick story with you. I was commissioned to make a wig for a feature film years ago. Um, there was a tight, very tight deadline. And as I'm sitting there and I'm making this wig and I'm freaking out because I'm getting close to my deadline. I pay no attention to this particular light that I had that I was using. It was not a daylight. It was lights that we used to use in our film studios that was extremely, extremely hot. So this light was shining. It was shining on my wig block, but it was hitting the side of my face. I paid no attention to it whatsoever. I was just working and working. And then when I finally finished, and went to go to bed and closed my eyes for three days, I saw that light. This whole side of my face, all I could see was like, it was like a silhouette of the light. I thought I had blinded myself. You know how you think all kinds of crazy things. I was thinking everything was wrong. I ended up being okay, obviously, because that was so many years ago, but that was when I realized lighting is important, but also proper lighting is very, very, very important. And last but certainly not least is going to be a magnifier. Now, me personally, I don't like the magnifiers. I just think it slows me down, but I've seen a ton of people do very well with magnifiers and they love them. That's just not me. I personally prefer to use readers but I have a prescribed reader that my doctor gave me that has like it's a different prescription in each eye because of the way my eyes are. But that's what I prefer. Uh, I pop those on. I can see really good with a good light. I'm, I'm rocking and rolling. All right. So I'll throw options down for you for everything that I've mentioned. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Obviously, you want to make sure that you also have some lace in your kit. But the reason why I didn't mention it is because your lace is going to be determined by project. So um, you can keep some lace on deck if you want. You don't have to. If it's the same type of work that you know you're going to be doing, then it would be smart to have some lace on deck. But um, one of the things that I would have in my wig kit is definitely a lace sample booklet. And you can get them from multiple companies. If the company sells lace, typically they do have some sort of a sample booklet that you can buy. I would make sure to have that in my kit so that you can refer back to it. Uh, there's also some other things. These are just essentials. Some other things like um, 
shears or scissors, thread, um, tape. I'm just talking about the basic items in this video. So I'll do another video eventually that'll lay out literally everything, but these are just some of the essentials. All right, I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell, all of the dings and whistles, okay? All of them. <laughs> I have thoroughly enjoyed recording this video for you. Thank you so much for tuning in. God bless, and I'll talk to you soon.